Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and this is Jupiter and Saturn. In today's video I actually wanted to discuss a very interesting hypothesis slash theory that focuses on the fact that both of these planets have different number of very very large satellites. Jupiter seems to have a lot more, it has four large satellites known as Io, Ganymede, Callisto and Europa, whereas Saturn only has one known as Titan. And there is actually a very interesting reason for this. In today's video you're going to find out why and hopefully you're going to learn something new. Welcome to What The Math. And so, as I mentioned, Saturn seems to only have one large uh, satellite known as Titan, which is basically uh, the second largest moon in our solar system, slightly larger than our own moon. Uh, if I were to place moon here, it would actually be a little bit smaller and slightly smaller than Ganymede. So, there's only one of these though. Jupiter, on the other hand, has four of these large moons and they're basically right here. There's Io, which is actually a relatively large at about 1.2 sizes of our, or masses of our own moon. There's Europa, there is Ganymede, which is the largest satellite we have in our solar system that is actually even bigger than Mercury. And we, finally we have Callisto. So if we were to look at the chart here, there they are, these four very large satellites known as Galilean moons, much, much larger than the closest moon to them. Now, why is it that Jupiter has four and Saturn has one? For the longest time, scientists thought, well, maybe this, it's actually because Jupiter is technically more massive than uh, Saturn and because uh, it had a lot more mass when it was forming and so it got to create more satellites. This is Saturn for comparison. It's uh, about three times less massive than Jupiter. But the reality is actually a little bit more tricky than that. And the reality has to do with the actual formation of these planets early in the formation of the solar system. So when they were still part of the protoplanetary disk, which you can kind of see represented by these yellow particles everywhere here, both Jupiter and Saturn were basically part of their own protoplanetary system where there was actually a disk orbiting around them. So let's just actually take a look at Saturn. And so here is a kind of a protoplanetary disk, uh, or I guess planetary disk, orbiting around Saturn, which will eventually result in formation of various moons. Now, both Saturn and Jupiter had these, but the thing about Jupiter is that since it's more massive, it was able to um, collect, or I guess suck up, a much larger protoplanetary disk, thus clearing a much larger area than did uh, Saturn. So. This is what the Jupiter's protoplanetary disk looks like. Or I guess in this case it would be called proto-moon or proto-satellite disk. And this is a slightly smaller disk of Saturn. And because Saturn is slightly less massive than Jupiter, it wasn't actually able to clear this area of protoplanetary disk around the Sun as quickly as Jupiter, and so you couldn't actually collect as much material as fast. Jupiter, however, cleared this area really, really fast and started to coalesce its satellites. And at some point, it basically started to look very similar to how it looks today. So here I just placed uh, five random moons orbiting around uh, Jupiter. And these five moons were created from this uh, proto-satellite disk and basically started to kind of slow down because of all this material flying around Jupiter. But because Jupiter is so massive, it was actually able to clear all of this stuff very, very quickly. And so these moons didn't really get to slow down as much. Maybe some of them actually disappeared and some of them crashed into Jupiter, but the majority, uh, majority of the big moons kind of just stayed in the same area. So because of the actual mass of Jupiter, this area was cleared very, very quickly and all of this proto-satellite stuff kind of just disappeared. However, in case of Saturn, these large moons that were formed from uh, all of this material um, ended up not really getting the same sort of treatment because a lot of this material didn't disappear as quickly. Saturn was not as, or is not as massive as Jupiter and so proto-satellite uh, ring stayed here much, much longer. And because of this ring, these moons actually started to slow down over time. So I'm going to simulate this uh, by basically literally slowing down this moon and manually changing its velocity. Now let's actually just see what happens to it as we pretend to slow down as it passes through, 
through all of this material and through all of this stuff that's sort of orbiting around Saturn. And there you go. It basically collided with Saturn. And so all of the large moons that were present around Saturn in the beginning ended up colliding with it. Except for Titan. Titan was lucky enough to be far, no far away and could actually wait long enough for all of the other moons to basically either disturb the proto-satellite disk or essentially collide with Saturn. And by the, by the time Saturn finished forming its moons and by the time the proto-satellite disk completely disappeared, which we're going to do right now by erasing all of these particles, Titan was already in a relatively stable orbit around Saturn with all of the other smaller moons orbiting around it. Now, so this is essentially the very interesting explanation for why Saturn only has one large moon, whereas uh, Jupiter has four, Io, Ganymede, Europa, and Callisto, and this is also explains why Ganymede also happens to be a little bit closer to Jupiter than other satellites, because it's more massive, it's actually larger, so it would have been affected by this proto-satellite um, disk a lot more than um, moons that are slightly less massive and are farther away. In other words, one of the reasons why Ganymede is so much closer to Jupiter than other moons is because it actually got affected by these tiny proto-satellite particles that used to exist here and that basically slowed it down and made it approach Jupiter closer. And had it actually stayed around longer, in other words, if the proto-satellite disk was a little bit uh, more massive or stayed around in the system longer, all of these moons would have actually also collided with Jupiter and would have actually completely disappeared and it would have no large moons whatsoever, only smaller moons that it has today. And so just to summarize, the only reason that Jupiter has four large moons and Saturn only has one is because of the early um, proto-satellite disk that essentially slowed down all of these other moons and made them collide with uh, its, its parent body. And so had Ganymede stayed around uh, the proto-satellite disk a little bit longer and had it actually decreased its speed even less, it would have actually very likely collided with Jupiter as well and combined with it. But as we have it, it just so happens that Jupiter was actually massive enough to get rid of this proto-satellite disk relatively early. And this actually saved its large Galilean moons from complete and utter, dis utter destruction that you're about to see as I collide this beautiful and extremely large moon called Ganymede with the largest planet in our solar system known as Jupiter. And there's actually the shadow of Ganymede approaching Jupiter. And here we go. Here comes the collision. So this is what would have happened had the proto-satellite disk remained. But Jupiter was massive enough, was big enough to basically help those moons survive while its beautiful twin, or I guess uh, cousin, Saturn, uh, didn't really save its satellites and they ended up crashing with it and basically became absorbed with the gas giant creating Saturn as we know it today, which also suggests that maybe the composition of Saturn is slightly different on the inside than the composition of Jupiter. And well, anyway, so now hopefully you know why Saturn only has one large moon and why Jupiter has four. And hopefully you will subscribe if you still haven't, and you'll come back tomorrow to learn something completely different using video games or some other medium of entertainment that I often use to teach stuff like science and space science and sometimes math. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, post something below in the comments. Let me know what you think about this video and let me know if you know of any other really cool hypotheses or theories that explain something about our solar system. I'll see you guys in the next video. I'll see you tomorrow. And as always, space out. See you later. Bye bye. And it looks like I've created a very large, very beautiful eye of Saturn. That is a pretty cool way of finishing the video. See you later.